I first met Todd Willingham in 1999. I was uh, basically adrift uh, after a relationship had ended and my ex-husband had received news that he had cancer and I was at my church one day and I saw a flyer saying, come to Philadelphia and protest the death penalty. And I was like, well, I'm against, against the death penalty and so I hopped aboard this bus and went to Philadelphia. And so I received a letter from the person whose name was matched, and it was Cameron Todd Willingham. And the letter was this very polite letter saying, thank you uh, for uh, writing, or agreeing to write, and will you come for a visit so we can tell you what the conditions are like here. So I went to Huntsville for the very first time. And I sat for two hours and listened to this man tell me about his case and about how they were treated. So I went home and I was really stunned at how we could treat human beings. That, that was the primary thing on my mind. But as we began to correspond, this person that I was writing to and receiving letters from was not this person who had been accused of starting a fire which ended in the death of his, his children. So I went up to Austin and I went through the court records and immediately two things leaped up. One was a jailhouse snitch. And I just couldn't believe that Todd would lean down and speak through the bean hole where they pass their food and say, I did it. You know, I just that didn't make any sense. The second red flag was a man who testified and his name is Dr. Grigson. He's also known as Dr. Death. He has since been, uh, I think, they don't just bar them, what do they do, strip them of their credentials or whatever, because he was known for uh, stepping in for the prosecution and without even consulting a person saying that this you know, individual must be removed from society because he or she is a detriment and will do it again. So those two things were a little bizarre. So I contacted a woman who had produced one of my plays, and she had been a reporter, and off we go to Corsicana to investigate. And the more I learned, the more I began to doubt what the prosecution was saying. The first thing was that uh, the description of Todd was uh, that he was satanic, that, you know, that he, he, he had this uh, horrible uh, past of, of crime, and the crime turned out to be as an adolescent stealing a bicycle, another one was shoplifting, and the, the satanic element was at, um, heavy metal posters. So that really started to worry me. And I spoke with his ex-wife, who insisted that she never believed that he did this. I spoke uh, to the people in the town, and they let everyone know that um, they were all on the Willingham side because it was a tragic thing. It happened around Christmas, the loss of the three children. But then when it became, uh, oh, it was an intentional fire, somebody had to be at fault. And at first, they were looking at the wife. And, uh, and then Todd became the person who the prosecutor, who at the time was running uh, for office, it, I mean, this is a great opportunity for someone who wants to look tough on crime. And so I really was starting to have doubts. And I, I tried writing a few essays. Todd and I talked about writing anything to get information out about his case. I ended up um, submitting some essays and then realizing that being a playwright, for me to write a manuscript would probably take forever. And about that time, uh, the Diverse Works was having a an opportunity for artists to come in in residency and write something, and I thought, well, I'll write something about uh, Todd and death row. And um, in the meantime, I was contacting Walter Reeves, his, his uh, attorney in the appeals. Well, let me go back up. One of the things that struck me in Corsicana was David Martin, who you might have seen recently on CNN. Mm -hmm. When I was interviewing him, of course, he didn't look like he looked on television. He looked like a reasonably educated individual, <laughs> and he said, if Todd Willingham ever got out, he would be a danger to society. And I remember thinking, that's strange coming from the defense attorney, because I had spoken to the prosecution. The one person in the entire town who made sense to me was one of the firemen. 
And he said, you don't know what you're going to do in a fire until you're in a fire. And what was looking to me, or what, what, what was appearing to me was an individual who woke up, house was on fire, and basically self-preservation set in, and he ran out and, and couldn't get back in. So I began to think that was his crime. And uh, we continued corresponding and continued trying to find help. I, ha I had the assistance of my brother, who's a, a federal defender in North Carolina, advising me. I had an attorney who's now here in Austin named Bryce Benjet, who was helping people. And it just seemed like the more we tried, we just kept hitting you know, walls. You know? We spent 90% of our time trying to find who set this fire. If it wasn't Todd, then who was it? Was it Stacy? She wasn't there. Was it a boyfriend? Was it an ex-lover? You know, Todd always was honest about who he was. He was, you know, a, as a young man, he you know sold drugs, he used pot, he was kind of a rabble rouser. Yes, he liked heavy metal, but he loved his children. He made that clear all the time. He never ever changed his story. And then I came across an article. And it was about Gerald Hurst getting a, a woman off uh, for an, an arson incident. And so that was my last real step with Todd, which was getting this information to Gerald Hurst. Now, I recall my conversation with him, and this was a long time ago, and I was a stand-up person at the time. I had a car accident since then. <coughs> my sense from him was that, well, you know, it's tough in Texas to get somebody out of the system once they're in there. And that seems to be true. Um, I mean, I think they've had several examples of that. When people were found innocent, they still didn't want to release them. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately for me, uh, the following no in November of 2003, I had a car accident. And uh, I was completely paralyzed from the neck down. I was in the hospital. And a friend wrote Todd and told them what had happened. Told him what had happened. And so when he was executed, I was. It was the letter was read to me because I couldn't even hold anything at that time. So I don't think I've really begun to process what happened until really this this spring when David Grant from the New Yorker contacted me. I gave him all the materials and he wrote the beautiful, beautiful article that is bringing attention to this case now. As tragic as Todd's losing his life for this is this game that's being played now to keep our minds off the fact that there was not a crime. If there's not a crime, there cannot be a prosecution, there cannot be a conviction, there cannot be an execution, and there was. So I understand exactly what Governor Perry is doing on a psychological level, and the same with David Martin, and that is when you are at fault for letting something go wrong, you tend to throw dirt out there to distract people, and that's what's happening now. They're, they're talking about Todd in the same vocabulary that the prosecution used. You know, that he was a wife beater. Yes, he was. He admitted to it. That he was out drinking after the death of his children. Yes, who knows what behavior is going to happen when you've lost your children. I don't know, but that's not why you execute a person. You execute a person in this state for starting a fire that resulted in the death of his children, and that did not take place. And, and so I'm really urging everyone not to get into the he did it, he didn't do it argument, because that's not what this is about. What this is about is that he was prosecuted for a crime that did not take place, and the arson investigators, with the best scientific information, are trying to draw our attention to this in the hopes that it will never happen again. And that is the only good thing I can see coming out of his execution, is that if it will be the catalyst for finally changing the death penalty issue in, in this country. That if we know someone innocent has been executed, then that's the reason to end it. So that's all. Thank you.